Hello, welcome to my talk on Pi stories, digital hunting in 18th and 19th century. This is the second part of the series talk on Pi stories. In this part, I will first introduce the first infinite series for Pi, the Leibniz series, and then move to Arctangent series. For pi, and we will see the Marchand's formula and the Euler's formula for pi, and、uh, we will give some other formulas for fast calculating pi, and finally we will show the digits hunting for pi in 18th and 19th centuries. In 1682, Leibniz published his series for pi, given as this. In fact, infinite series can be regarded as a game changer for pi in 18th century, since Newton and Leibniz invented calculus. Since then, it would be much easier. To calculate the pi, then the method based on the polygons, as I shown in the first part of the series talk. Although Madeva in about 1400 and Gregory in 1671 had obtained arctangent series before Leibniz, but both missed to specify the special case. And based on the book, A History of Pi by Beckman, Newton calculated pi to 15th decimal places based on his own infinite series during the plague years in 1665 to 66. But his calculation only published in the book. Method of fractions and infinite series in 1742. Newton once wrote, "I'm ashamed to tell you to how many figures I carried out these calculations, having no other business at that time." It seems Newton calculated pi to 15th decimal places at the past time. During the plague years, a very important advancement for pi is the infinite series for arctangent function, given as this. So immediately, if we let x equaling to one, we could have the Leibniz series as this. Since arctangent one would be pi divided by four. However, this series is not good for using to calculate pi because it converges very slowly. In another case, Abram Sharp took x equal to one divided by square root of three. And、uh, we could have the series for pi given as this. Obviously, this series would converge faster than the Leibniz series, but it is still not very good for calculating pi. And、uh, one problem is here the square root calculation. This is very difficult. For calculating many decimal places, however, Sharp used this series to calculate 71 decimal places in 1699. Generally, we can play the manipulations on the arctangent function. So here we take. X equal to tangent a, and y equals to tangent b. That means we have a is the arctangent x, 
P is the arctangent of Y. Now we look at the situation for the tangent function of A minus B. So it would be given by sine A minus B divided by cosine A minus B. So if we use the trigonometry relation, we have the expression for sine A minus B in the numerator and the cosine A minus B in the denominator. And then we can divide all the terms use cosine A times cosine B. So we could have the expression as this. And then we will have the expression tangent A minus tangent B divided by 1 plus tangent A times tangent B for tangent A minus B. Then we replace tangent A and B use X and Y. We have the relation at this. So from this tangent A minus B equaling to this, we can obtain A minus B as the arctangent of the expressions of X and Y at this. That means we have the expression for arctangent X minus arctangent Y equaling to arctangent this expression. This is a very important formula for calculating pi. And in the next few slides, we will apply this formula to better formulas for pi. Now we will see how we can use the formula for the arctangent relation given as this. Here, we can let x equaling to u divided by v and the y equaling to w and z. And then we can substitute x, y into the arctangent relation. We could have the arctangent relation given as this. A famous example is u and v are 1 and the w is 1, z is 2. So we could have the expression arctangent 1 is actually pi divided by 4 equaling to arctangent 1 over 2 plus arctangent 1 over 3. Here in the expression, we can control this value and this value by setting u, v, w, and z. And the last term, one third, would be calculated from this expression. And useful expression would be x equaling to 1 over v and uh, y equaling to 1 over 2v for this expression. And uh, we could have the expression for the arctangent relation as this. Here we can see we are trying to reduce the value for the arctangent 1 over v into 1 over 2v. And the next step, we could take x equaling to v divided by 2v squared plus 1 and the y keep the same as 1 over 2v. So for the last term of the arctangent, we can perform the calculation. It would be given as this. So this is the relation number 2. And we put the, the relation 1 and 2 together. We could have the expression as this. This expression means we can reduce the value for the arctangent to half its value. And we could have the coefficient 2 here, but we have a value, the minus value for this. For example, if we take v as 5, and then according to this relation, we could have arctangent 1 of 5 equaling 2 arctangent 1 over 10 minus arctangent 1 over 515. So this is another useful expression we will use later in this talk. 
Now we will have a look at the Manchin formula, the famous formula for calculating pi. So step one, we start from u and v are both one, and the target value would be w equaling to one, z equaling to five. So we use this expression. We could have arctangent one equaling to arctangent one over five plus this value. So this would be arctangent one over five plus arctangent two over three. So we have one arctangent one over five. Second step, we take u equaling to two, v equaling to three, and again w is one, z is five. So this manipulation is for the last term in this expression here. So arctangent two over three equaling to arctangent one over three plus arctangent this value. And uh, it would equal to arctangent 1 over 5 plus arctangent 7 over 17. So we have another arctangent 1 over 5 here. In the step 3, we take a u equaling to 7 here, v 17 here. And again, w is 1, z is 5. So the arctangent 7 over 17 is given as arctangent 1 over 5 plus arctangent this. See here, arctangent 1 over 5 plus arctangent 9 over 46. So we have another arctangent 1 over 5 here. So in the step 4, we take u as 9, v as 46. W1, Z5. So we can calculate arctangent 1 over 5 plus arctangent this value. See here, arctangent 1 over 5 plus arctangent minus 1 over 239. So we have the fourth arctangent 1 over 5. It should be noted here, the arctangent minus 1 over 239 because arctangent is an odd function. So we can take a minus sign out of the arctangent expression. Therefore, if we put all this together, we could have the expression as the margins formula for arctangent 1 equaling to 4 arctangent 1 over 5 minus arctangent 1 over 239. 4 means in the previous slide we have obtained 4 arctangent 1 over 5. If we use the infinite series for the arctangent, so we could have expression as this. Now from here we can see for calculating pi would be much easier because in the arctangent function, the value is quite small, 1 over 5th, much smaller than the value 1. For the match and the formula, we can see the first term is well suited for the pi decimal calculation because the successive terms diminish by a factor involving 1 over 5 squared. It is 0.04. And the second series in this bracket would converge very rapidly. As such, Marchen calculated pi to 100 decimal places in 1706. And later, in 1719, the French mathematician De Lacny increased the decimal places to 127. If we compare the calculation to 127 decimal places by using Leibniz series for such decimals, it would need about 10 power of 50 tons. Now we will have a look at the Euler's formula based on the similar procedure as the Marchand formula we could obtain the Euler's formula given as this. So here, 
we could have the octangent of 1 over 7 and the octangent of 3 over 79. So if we substitute the infinite series for the octangent, we could have the expression as this. Because of the smaller value for the octangent, the infinite series converges faster. The fact is, Euler did their calculation using this formula in 1755, and he calculated pi to 20 decimal places. And he claimed that all the calculation consumed about one hour of work. So if we compare this to the 35 decimal pi for which Rudolf van Sulen in about 1600, he spent about 25 years in the calculation because he had to calculate the six layers of the square root. And for each square root, he must calculate to 35 decimals. Now in this slide, we will see some improved formulas for calculating pi. The formulas are used are basically as this. So generally, we need to half of the value for the octangent. The first is for the margins formula. So here, the octangent 105 might not be smaller enough. In fact, we can employ the formula for octangent 5 equaling to 2 octangent 1 over 10 minus octangent 1 over 515. Therefore, the margin formula can be improved into this expression. And the pi would be calculated as this. This is a 1 over 10 based formula for pi. And if we expand the octangent function, we could have the expression as this. And we put all this together. We can see the first term, the octangent 1 over 10, is very easy. In fact, we don't need to calculate this. We can just write it down. This will give much advantage in the calculation of the pi. And we can also see the second term, the octangent 1 over 239, and the third term, the octangent 1 over 515. These two would converge very quick. In this slide, we will have a look at the Euler's formula, given as this. The m is 2 half of the value 1 over 7. So we can have the expression as this. So the octangent 1 over 7 would be replaced by the octangent 1 over 14. But we have one extra term the octangent 1 over 1393. So based on this, we can have the formula for calculating pi on the 1 over 14 base, given as this. In fact, we can further the calculation to the formula on 120a base, given as this. Although we have more terms in the formula because of the smaller value for the octangent. So the conversion of the series would be faster. Here is a table for the comparison of all the formulas. We have one over five base the formula. It is margin's formula. And the Euler's own 1 over 7 base, and the improved formula 1 over 10 base, 1 over 14 base, and 1 over 28 base. So if we calculate pi to 10 decimal places, the terms 
for the calculation would be 9 terms together for 1 over 5 base and 10 terms by using Euler's equation and 9 terms for 1 over 10 base but here among the 9 terms 5 terms would be for the calculation of the tangent 1 over 10 and 1 over 14 base we have 11 terms and 1 over 28 base we have 9 terms and uh, we can also see the terms for calculating the pi to 20 decimals, 30 decimals, and 50 decimals. For example, for the pi calculation to 50 decimal places, one of our 28 based formula, we only have 40 terms, less than 45 terms by using the Marchand's formula and 44 terms using one tens based formula. But among the 44 terms, 25 terms are the calculation for the tangent of one of tens. In fact, we don't actually calculate that. So when compare all this, it seems one of tens based formula would be the best for calculating pi. So in the last slide, we will see the digital hunting for pi in 18th and 19th centuries. Here we see one exceptional calculation is made by Newton. He actually did the calculation in 1665. According his own word, he did this because he took it as a pastime, not the digital hunting. And then we can see the decimals increase with the year. One exceptional calculation is Euler in 1755. He only calculated 20. He's not in the digital hunting. He just showed how fast he could calculate pi to 20 decimal places. He finished that in one hour calculation. And the highest number would be the calculation finished by Shanks in 1874. He did the calculation to decimal places 707, but only 527 are correct. So we see this plot, the increase of the decimals for pi with the year.